hey man, you know, this is what I'm charging. If you're trying to get this, you know, pay this up front. And then, you know, I then once I'm done, I need this amount at the end. And, you know, if they try to, oh man, you know, I, I appreciate that fam. If you, if you don't want to pay that, I get it. I can put you in contact someone that may be more your price range, but if you wanted me to do this, ah, this nigga's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, I'll put you in contact with somebody. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I know some people have a certain, you know, price range they want to do. You know what I'm saying? You come to me, maybe my price range is too high. I respect that. Yeah. So, and I know people who are starting out. I know people who are midway. I know people who are working full time worth of doing. So I can put you in contact with someone who's going to be more your price range, depending on what you're looking for. That's right. Thank you very much, man, for hopping on, on the pod. This is Culture Convos. Um, and we're just going to talk a little bit about what you do and how you got cool. there. Um, I do want to start on like a super, super light note, man, because, you know, I know you from back at ASU. We did like mm-hmm. this hip hop panel uh, where yeah. we were uh, talking about like, you know, what's hip hop and graffiti and music and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I think back then yeah. you were going by Tiny T. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Name, man. Tell me the origin. Is that yeah. family? Like, your family gave you that name coming up, or your homies? Uh, like, honestly, uh, that nickname came for um, from the group, like BAC Black Artists they Connected. Like, that was that was their nickname that they gave me after we had done a couple of, sh- you know, I had done some work for them, some design work, and it came back as Tiny T, and it stuck. Ah, okay, got you. Now yeah, that's hilarious because yeah. because obviously you've done some work with my lady on like with your brand and like yeah. the photography. Yeah, yeah. And I had like pulled up the like my your number or something in my phone. And she's like, "Yo, why does that say Tiny T?" <laughs> 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 you know. And I was just crack it up like, "Damn, that was like a super yeah. specific like you know what I'm saying place yeah. where they knew you as that you know what I'm saying." So that was that was funny. That was funny. So yeah, let's talk about art, man. You know, we were on that panel. You talked a little bit about like graffiti. You know, what I'm saying you had some really good takes on music, but also on the art side of things. How did you get into art? I'm not gonna lie. I've been doing art since I was just a little shorty. You know, what I'm saying so. Done all different mediums from graffiti to paint, to pen, charcoal, pencil, digital. I've, I've touched it all at least one time. You know, so I've been yeah. pretty well rounded with my art career. So. I mean, I took it from there. I was really in the, in the art, even high school, uh, you know, going into JUCO, you know, I kind of, you know, was still doing art heavy. But then when I went to ASC, I wanted to get really serious with it. That's why I made it my major. So. Okay. How was that, though? Like, going from, like, just self-taught to, like, all right, I'm in a classroom. Like, we got to do the circles how they want to do the circles. We got to do art how they want to do the art. <laughs> right. It was, uh, I had to learn to listen. I had to learn to listen because coming from my background, I just, you know, I opened a sketch pad and I, I went to town to do whatever I wanted. But when you're more in a structured system, you have to pay attention to what they're teaching you and you know, listen to what you're teaching and then apply that to what you're already doing. Because, I mean, not everything teaches is right. You know what I'm saying? You have to go through a certain curriculum that they put together, but it's not always going to be, you know, for you or towards you. So, right. I, you know, I took, what they, I took what they taught me. I applied it to what I already know, what I wanted to do, and just take it from there. Oh, okay, now that's 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 dope, and I definitely connect on that level because when I came in to ASU, I was doing uh, poetry. I did creative writing, mm-hmm. poetry, you know. That. But I'm coming in with a yeah. love for spoken word, deaf jam poetry, right. like you know, and the way we go about expressing, and the way that we go about like communicating. Uh, mm-hmm. Our art is a lot different than how that should look on page. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it definitely was a struggle just coming from a more street level art to all right, here's what we want. But even I found some of my professors, you know, learning too. Like all right, you know what I'm saying? This is a I don't want to call it a niche, but in the in the spectrum of what poetry is, like mm-hmm. spoken word is like a a branch off of that. You know what I'm saying? That not many people. Right dive into so it was like a fusing of those worlds because again i'm not trying to do 
exactly that you know i guess the trajectory of that will be either become a best-selling author poet you know what i'm saying or become a professor eventually but like when you're doing a spoken word thing you blend that with music you know what i'm saying certain cadences appeal to other elements of expression and you know all kind of stuff so to all that to say yeah no i definitely connect on that level of just coming from doing your art on your own to like having to listen and you know take in the fundamentals of exactly what they're trying to get across because like you do need to understand the history of the discipline before you can go create and bend exactly. rules you know you got to understand them a little bit exactly and uh you know art history really plays a big a big part in that like that was one part of curriculum that i really had to learn to appreciate was art history okay and just learning the culture of you know what you're trying to do you know for people who've done it before you because I, I wasn't i was never big into that and i just i hated taking it at the beginning of you know school and everything but after, by the time i graduated i was like i really got into art history understood the meaning behind learning everything about it right i don't have it in front of me but i just grabbed this book because like you know we got the brand iron root and trying to do mm -hmm. shit and whatever but like mm -hmm. we hit the bookstore the other day and i, I grabbed the a book about like the history of the t-shirt you know it broke down mm -hmm. like the white t-shirt and you know mm -hmm. different brands from the hundreds you know even though they came around in like 2000 but even the brands well before that kind of how they used it nike adidas you know the trefoil right. look and all those right. different things like you kind of learn like the path that the t-shirt took because again like we are trying to craft some stuff and i've been thinking about stuff but without really knowing like you know some of that it's just like wow okay using the full shirt or you know using different size of things of course we can see what's going on today but you know, just seeing the brands that did it first and all that stuff is definitely inspiring. And it just kind of offers like a little bit of that perspective, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to use it as a template, but like seeing that and knowing that, you know what I'm saying, right. definitely helps. Like knowing that there was a, a Tupac, you know what I'm saying? And right. you can study that music, right? And, and that's off a of t-shirt, that's on the music, but like as a music artist, you know what I'm saying? You could be like, yo, a lot of what he said connected with the listener in this way and they reacted in this way. So you got that knowledge yeah. of what a venture, you know, what what a story, California Love, what that did versus, you know, Thug's Paradise. So many different variations of ways you can go about creating music that'll generate a result and having that in your, you know, your toolkit is dope. Definitely. Yes. So what's, what was the biggest aha, aha moment for you as an artist? Like when it, I, you know, I don't know, when, when, when it clicked for you, as in you felt confident in what you were creating, like, yo, this is my style, this is where I want to go, because like you said earlier, you were doing a lot, you were all multifaceted artists on the page, sketching this and that, like, you know, a lot of what I've, you know, used your services for, and what I see you, like, posting stuff, involves a lot mm -hmm. of digital, and, like, manipulation to images, and, like, art on top of that, so, um, two-part question obviously like when did you get your aha moment about the style and then talk a little bit about like your style it happened in juco uh i remember my first year at juco like i took like a photoshop class it was i think this was on like cs2 maybe look maybe it was cs yeah but i had, yeah right back in the day <laughs> but i hadn't done anything digital at this time but i remember taking that class and like learning the tools i was like no oh, this is this is fun. Like, I was having a good time that day. I was, like, one of my favorite classes to take. And then after that, I took another digital class, and I just enjoyed everything about it. I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to keep going with this, but I'm having too much fun just doing this art. And then going from there, I'm still taking, you know, my normal curriculums, you know, my normal, you know, painting and things like that classes. And I was like, yeah, this is fun, too. But let me go back to the digital side, because I'm really doing what we do. So that's when my moment came, but I think digital is definitely the way I want to go because I'm enjoying it and there's so much to learn about it at the same time. Mm. So, but I guess it took a while for me to really kind of grasp like how I can apply it to artwork though because I learned digital, I went to graphic design and I went from graphic design went to clothing. So when you're doing clothing, you're not really doing as much art and painting. It's more like logo and design work. And you know, you're putting on clothing and you're trying to make something catch, you know, going the whole night. I mean, you, you know, because you, you weren't doing clothing. Now. So it, I went from that. I was, I, it, clothing kind of failed, to be completely honest. So when I when the clothing failed, I went back to, okay, let's go just look at it as just artwork. So, and actually when I made my first sale on my original painting, it was a, it was a J. Cole piece. Uh, it's called from four yards only. Uh, it's my J. Cole piece. I sold that black and white one. Um, it's the print one that has the words and it makes up the entire image. Oh, I'm looking up at a J. Cole piece that I have from you at the crib right now, mm -hmm. but uh, 
that's not it. But okay, no, keep going. Just, you said J. Cole. Hey, that's him right Yeah, he said, might be this. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I yeah. only got a copy. I don't got the original. Gotcha. Like, you know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you. Um, but that that was when I, I saw that piece for $75. It was 12 by 16 original campus. When I did that, I was like, that was a quick 75. Like, all right, this is, this is, I think I can do this. And so I just, I kind of really, I went really hard on it after that. So. Okay. So let's go back a little bit to the clothing. Like, what was your experience? Not, you know, we're, we're not necessarily talking about the business and the sales of it, but like in terms of making it, like what was your, uh, your process? Did you have any good relationships with vendors out here or did you have an easy time, like getting the materials, getting it printed up, getting it, you know, made? Right. Um, that was a really a trial and error process. Like it was, nothing was easy, you know, with the clothing line. But I did make a lot of good connections and relationships doing it, though, that I was able to flourish and able to use when I went with strictly all of the time. So um, one vendor completely was Acme Prints. Like they were like one of the main printing companies that I use, you know, with the clothing line. And, I they were, that was a great relationship for a good three or four years. And, okay, uh, you know they they really helped me learn about clothing, like because I would come in and would just design, but they would take the time to measure it on the shirts, you know, to tell me about my coloring, you know, really kind of just break down the design aspect, and so it can transfer correctly over the shirts. So that was probably one of my best connections during the clothing line because it taught me about how to actually get artwork ready to go on clothing. That's real. It's, yeah um another great connection i made from my clothing line days was my uh a good friend of mine now her name is tiffany and she was my marketing and like branding consultant mm -hmm. you know because you know it's great to have dope design but if no one's buying them you know just they don't go nowhere right so she taught me the marketing and branding of you know doing clothing and things like that a lot of her tactics and techniques she taught me i still use today when i'm trying to market and brand my art. right so that was another great connection I made during my clothing days. I was able to learn from and apply to what I'm doing today. Word. Okay. Now that's dope, yeah. man. It's definitely all about making those connections. Like, you know, yeah. I expect, you know, more like not more so, but like, especially for me, I connect on the level of the, uh, learning, you know, from the vendor. It's like, you know, cause you just right. whip up some stuff, send it over, like, yeah, print that on that. You know, right. and then you get you get the quote back. And you're like, damn, why it cost so much? Well, it's like, right. you're using, you're like, What's up with you're that? using these colors. Like, it's this much variation. Like the logo right. behind me, actually, I sent that in. And I tried to get this embroidered. Like we were gonna do some hoodies mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. get this embroidered on the chest of the hoodie. You know what I'm saying? And right. I've gotten this price to get some stuff done before. But then if you look at the design, it's like a camo pattern with the different greens right. and all that. And he gave me the mock up. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, yo, just for one, like to do the embroidery is gonna be forty five dollars. Right. You know, right. <laughs> he's like, no. I'm like, damn, I can't even order twelve and get that down a little bit. I'm telling you, you know, you know what, what I'm saying? saying? So it's just like just understanding your designs and the intention behind it, like what you're trying to execute, and then trying to right. go about it the best possible way to like work with the vendor to keep like costs down, unless you're trying to go right. for, you know, the pieces that are here's a three hundred dollar hoodie, like you know what I'm saying, and we would have to roll right. it out as that, <laughs> that. No real talk. That's Kanye the, going on. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly, man. We gotta distress them, find some kind of right. unique distressing to make it make it special. So let's talk a little bit about like most of the stuff that you're doing today when it comes to your art. Um, where are you applying most of your focus? Um, coming back into it, uh, it's been really just trying to get my style back. Um, like I said, I took a year off in 2021, so you know there was a little rest coming back to it, but. I'm getting my style back, and then I'm starting to concentrate on doing more than just iconic figures. Because uh, before, my, my work was mostly a lot about iconic figures, you know, your Nipsey's, your Kobe's, your J. Cole's, you know, you know, cats like that who inspired me in my work, but I wanted to kind of break out more than just, hey, this guy just does pieces of these, these iconic figures and legends and things like that. So I've been kind of, you know, concentrating more culturally on my work lately. Uh, actually, one of my most recent pieces uh, is called the... Uh, the divine being i was really inspired by because I'm, I'm, I'm a very nerdy guy i like comics and things like that so but i also want to apply that to you know a little bit of a culture piece so i took a photo applied some special effects and some painting to make it look like you know some comics and things like that you know, 
kind of you know work with the divine being piece that way you know have some black culture too and things like that so it kind of broke away from me just doing like a regular kobe piece or something like that yeah man so now you got some heat dude like i was just thinking <laughs> when i got back here i got the eye like you are very it wasn't our first oh, event it was our second man, event bro yeah. but you gifted us that purple eye that's on the stand like, yeah. bro, that's, that's the top of my bookshelf bro definitely one of my that's favorites dope. you know man, even, I even about like, that piece. i don't know what celebrity that i was but like you know you definitely <laughs> have like that creativity celebrity or not like you know what i'm saying that right. uniqueness about it i think uh you know maybe if it's not the celebrities then you got some commissioned work that i've seen you know with you doing work either for other people couples or some like erotic artsy type of stuff you know what i'm saying so no nah, man it's, it's definitely glad you know good to hear that you back on it like the work that you did on my late night that was my first album you know the work you did for the late night project you know is like super valuable you know what i'm saying like i was glad we were able to connect on that because like again yeah. I don't get to spend a lot of time like you know that meeting we had at, at Kane's and all that shit just to set up all of that like most of the meetings I have is for I am root shit you know what I'm saying so for me to even back then in the busyness of like still doing all that I was doing it was it was dope for me to be able to connect you know what I'm saying and focus on myself so I you know I always appreciate you for being a part of that process and of course you know what i'm saying if ideas pop up and i think of you you know what i'm saying just because like you somebody i again man i'm big on relationships bro even if we didn't do no work back at that after that uh that panel it's just like that yeah. constantly seeing you i know we saw each other off and on at the villas on apache mm -hmm. and tempe yeah. and then it's just like yeah. you know what i'm saying just seeing you then the work mm -hmm. that you're doing with the clothing it was just like constantly reminding like y'all need to work with them you know what i'm saying it's just a reminder right. to right. stay connected because again bro like genuine people are hard to come by you know what i'm saying and i'm Definitely. i'm all for meeting new people and that's great but it's just like yo you never really know uh you know who's who's been around you or what kind of things that they're on i just connected with uh gabe whitehead who was around asu his older brother christian was at asu too and it's just like i've seen i've known him for a decade but we ain't we ain't did no work you know what i'm saying and not too long ago we were able to to get some work in and like you start building towards you know what's next you know what i'm saying in terms of the right. visuals and the creative direction so in terms of collaborations man what's been your experience with collaborations in the valley Man, I love collaborating with people, bro. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to do. I love collaborating with dope artists, just creating just dope work. That's I love doing it. Um, actually, recently I just collabed on a photo shoot with a with a dope photographer in the valley because uh, I have a media company. You know, I'm getting back off the ground. You know, we're specializing in video and photography. Set up a shoot, and you know, this, this I've known him for a long time. You know, he's a, he's a musician and he made that transition to photographer. You know, we we haven't been able to work together like you said often, but I've known him for so long, and this is a project got to collab on. So it was just, yeah. it was a fun time, it was dope, and I can't wait to get the pictures back because I know they're gonna be heat. Right. So I just it's so much fun to collab with dope artists because you get to you get to meet new people, you get to see different styles, how people work. It's just you know you combine ideas and see what you can pull from each other, just create this dope concept. So nice. So. And yeah. the next thing I want to throw out there to you, and we're not trying to slander nobody, but like, I mm -hmm. want to talk about, you know, for artists who are offering commission services, because like me as a music producer and audio engineer, I'm constantly working with clients to help them execute their vision. And I feel like as a visual artist, you know what I'm saying, when, you've, when you're getting commissioned works, there is, in, and in my space, I experience this as well. So I'm just saying in general, artists who are doing services for folks, um, there's a little bit of a, you know, disconnect between <laughs> what they want and how they explain that to you. You know what I'm saying? So what's been your process with like revisions and like, you know, just as you grew, you know, like my early conversations about revisions was like, yeah, you know, just let me know what you think. And then, you know, boom. But now it's like, yo, in the very beginning, I'm talking through like, all right, here's what you're looking for. Right. Here's an example yeah. of that. Right. Blah, blah, blah. So what's been your experience? You know what I'm saying? Just working with clients. Uh, my experience has been, for one, I put everything in writing, right? I, I'm big on contracts or agreements, whatever your verbiage you want to use, I'm big on getting some paperwork signed because I want to make sure that these are the details we spoke about, this is what I'm doing for you, this is my time frame price, if you sign it, you're agreeing to it, that's what we're, we're going to stick with. So I love, I'm big on getting contracts agreements signed. And then when it comes to things like, you know, when you've got revisions or changes and stuff, then I'm very upfront at the beginning saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. Give me every piece of information and detail you want for this particular commission, whatever you can think of. If it's the color, if it's a certain type of hair, if it's, 
you know, certain pose, a certain person, any details you want or can give me so I can make this piece kind of closer to what you're thinking, I need that up front. And then on top of that, I'm up front too, how many revisions you're going to get. Hey, this, I gave you three revisions, I gave four revisions before pricing starts to increase. So I'm very upfront about those type of details. I'm going to put it in writing, you're going to sign it, and then I'll get started. Okay, now that's real. Have you had any experiences with like, yo, man, we go way back, like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. <laughs> are those, I mean, I, as you're older, I feel like it's, you know, easier to have those conversations because you've experienced, mm -hmm. but those early days, was that difficult for you trying to like, you know, at the point in which you're trying to make money from this, you know what I'm saying? And now you have mm -hmm. some folks, obviously you're willing to moms, auntie, cousin, mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whatever, you got your people, but then there's the people that you would do it for you know what i'm saying but it's right. like yo you got it like it's not like you don't right. have it bro right. you could right. you could patriot not as much you could <laughs> you know what i'm saying pay for my services so yeah how has that been for you was it stressful as like an emerging um, artist did it like cause you any kind of anxiety or it just it took some getting used to especially when like you said when it's like a friend or you know family member or someone you're close to uh you know you don't want to be you, you can't do it for free but you can't do it for 50 bucks either right so yeah. you know i had to get used to you know just you know, telling people like, hey man you know this is what i'm charging if you're trying to get this you know play this up front and then you know i then you know, once i'm done i need this amount at the end and you know if they try oh man you know i, I appreciate that fam if you, if you don't want to pay that i get it i can put you in contact someone that may be more your price range but if you wanted me to do this ah, this, this thing is good it. yeah <laughs> 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 he said, "I put you in contact with somebody." Because <laughs> you know, I, I know some people have a certain you know price range they want to do. You know, what I'm saying you come to me, maybe my price range is too high. I respect that. Yeah. So, and I know people who are starting out. I know people who are midway. I know people who are working full time worth of doing. So, I can put you in contact with someone who's going to be more your price range, depending on what you're looking for. That's real. That's real, yeah. man. And I put myself in a situation. I can't lie, because like obviously like doing my music and then doing the iron root the events and stuff is separate but like being the owner of the iron root brand often a lot of the services that i could trade with people who are into that you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying is like my personal art shit like you know so they'll they'll mm -hmm. want to beat for doing a performance at a show you know so i'm like right. damn you gave me 10 minutes and i gotta spend three hours like producing this right. beat and then you get to take it and make money that's that's a different conversation but i was super young right. you know what i'm saying and i'm just like yo i just need to connect with this artist we need to get the platform up so you should, I'll bang out a beat for this nigga, no problem. And you know, right, or it'll right. turn into, all right, I'm no longer doing that because like beats turn into songs, turn into sales, turn into something else. Mm -hmm. Where I could, all right, mm -hmm. you got a song that you're trying to record, I'll exchange studio time. You know what I'm saying? Right. But even that, right. it's like it's just me. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the Iron Root brand needs so much. It's like I need, I need eight performers. You know what I'm saying? Right. Maybe six of them get paid two of them want to trade or whatever the, the situation right. is i just found myself right. like really stretching myself thin you know what i'm saying in mm -hmm. search of the opportunity or there was even times where i would just sign up for shit where i was taking pictures i was editing stuff i'm making flyers bro. i'm just doing everything to keep the name fresh like you know what i'm saying at the top you know what i'm saying where i'm risking my bottom line or i'm risking what i really want out of it uh by taking on like different ventures and stuff like that so now i definitely connect with you on that level uh oh it looks like you froze up you still here can you hear me mm -hmm. uh yeah i can hear you bro okay hold on one second let me see if we can uh get you the video me? back yeah i can hear you perfectly it's just you yeah, still yeah, yeah. all right time. there you are you, you back you back okay, all okay. right cool i just wanted to make right, sure cool, we cool. had you uh, but yeah, no, nah, I mean, not to ramble too much, but no, nah, I definitely connect there. When I was younger, bro, I was signing up and doing everything, and I wasn't really focused mm -hmm. on, like, damn, how much stress is this causing me? Or how much work do I got to put in to, like, be cool? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I wanted people to like me. I wasn't from Arizona. I'm from L.A., like, right. you know what I'm saying? So I'm right. just trying to, like, get my name out there and, like, do shit for people Exposure. and connect, you know what I'm saying? Then it was just like, all right, I don't think I need any more expo exposure, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I think <laughs> at, th at this point, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's affordable, bro. Like, it's not, you know, because yeah. again, my studio's at the crib, so my prices are were fairly affordable for a studio that's right. in an apartment, you know what I'm saying? Again, right. I'm not like charging you salt mine numbers, but again, right. like my time is valuable because right. I, I feel like I'm good at what I do, you know what I'm saying? And right. I've worked with artists to, you know, execute that. So, Right. We're gonna get off of the off of this topic, you know, because I can go all day. My experience okay, on this, right. I'm sure you can as well. We're gonna lighten right. it up a little bit, man. What's up? Okay. 
uh, you know, the pandemic was definitely something, and it's you know still ongoing, but it's been something that sat down a lot of people. You know, what I'm saying for reasons, uh, for health reasons, or just you know just because they can't work because their job is shut down. And I know that you talked a little bit about in 2021 that you took a break from mm-hmm. doing art. Um, mm-hmm. What uh, what things were you able? We're gonna look at the positive side of it. You know, pandemic yeah. was what it was. We all know yeah. what time it was on that front. But like, you know, in that experience, were you able to like either learn some things about yourself or your process that then caused you to want to take that break and like refocus? You know, what I'm saying, were there any highlights during the pandemic that you know either opened you up as an individual? You know, what I'm saying, or it's just with your art. Um, there were some good highlights from after 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 2020 sat me, like you said, sat me down. Like, I didn't really do a lot in 2020. Like when it happened, especially the type of artist I was at the time, I did a lot of events and I did a lot of you know first Fridays. Yeah, a lot of first Fridays, things like that. So when things got shut down, it shut down a good portion of what I was doing at the time. So I really had to kind of chill out, you know, do what I could in the house, but you know, I wasn't able to really push like I wanted to. And then after that, twenty, you know, I, I ended up finding my lady in 2020 and then going into 2021. See, that's a how I say, man, it can't be all bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely found my, that, I mean, I definitely found my lady in 2020, yeah. And then 2021, you know, we, we got serious and a lot of other personal things happened that I wanted to concentrate on. So, you know, I, I was blessed enough to buy a house in 21 as well. So going through that process and getting that ready, I was like, you know, let me concentrate on the personal over here. So, you know, when I get things, you know, done and steady, I go back to the business, which I'm doing in 2022. So, wow, that's amazing. I mean, yeah, yeah. So definitely some good highlights. And like you said, my lady got the house now, you know, we kind of steady. So I'm able to kind of push my, my brand and my artwork and my business harder now because, you know, we're, we're settled. Right, right. They got that motivation factor there too, man. Right, you man, to, man. You to, how you got it? You know, everything set up. She looking around right. like, right. You know, this, this art everywhere. We could turn this into a, <laughs> you know. So no, definitely, man. That's great. I definitely, uh, you know, I'm proud of you, bro. I'm glad to see it. You know, what I'm saying like, oftentimes, even for me, it's hard. To, it was hard for me to take a break and like sit myself down, like realizing. I mean, it was kind of helpful in a way. Honestly, our numbers were kind of taking a hit and. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I was just like, yo, we need it. We need something. You know what I'm saying? But I can't right. look past the next two weeks. I got to I gotta focus on what's right in front of me. You know what I'm saying? And when it right. happened, uh, you know, life and stuff was very unfortunate. But throughout that process, I really got to look internally. You know what I'm saying? And like, yo, yeah. here's the things that we should stop doing. You know, here's the things right. that we should focus on doing. Even though I can't do it right now. You know, I'm going to spend all my time thinking about when it's go time. Like, what's that next mm-hmm. step? You know, the conference we've been planning since 2019. But even that yeah. was just like, that's more of the direction of what's next. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. you know, continuing to be enlightened, but continuing to like enlighten folks that are coming up. Cause like, I just hit 30 last month. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like, nice. for me, it's like, yo, it's other cats coming up at ASU like we were, you know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. probably looking to do shit, you know what I'm saying? And, and get it going right. in their own way. And for me to, you know what I'm saying? Not be a resource when I'm, I'm literally like still a quarter of a mile away. I don't know for how long, but like, you know what I'm saying? While I'm here, I do want to be a resource and like put on game, even though it's not like top of the top and I'm not making all the money in the world from it. But I, I got experiences like you got experiences, you know what I'm saying? Those surface level experiences that, you know, entrepreneurs and creatives coming up will have to experience for themselves. But like we were right. talking about knowing the history of the game, you know what I'm saying? When we were coming up, Maybe YouTube and shit isn't as good as it was then. It was pretty good, but like shit's a lot better now. You can get on Twitch and watch people and really understand mm-hmm. and break down whatever topic you want to look into. And it's just, you know, for us, just being an entry level position for those folks where, you know what I'm saying, right. here's a resource, here's a group that I could tap in with that's going to tap me in with other folks that are doing things. So that's again why I appreciate you for sending in that video. No, for the conference, you're going to be on the panel and then you're going to be out of town and then you're pretty right. flexible, you know what I'm saying, to shoot me the video. But, you know what I'm saying, for me, it's like, again, I want to put folks like you who've who've experienced all types of things you know what i'm saying success failures you know what i'm saying like working with a brand in person like you know what i'm saying i've seen you at multiple different places and you've always pulled up to iron root events anytime i hit you up looking for someone that's willing to vent, you pull up you got even how you break i mean you do this bro like you know one thing i admire about the setup bro is it's concise like boom right. you got everything <laughs> boom you roll up pop it right, out right. you know what i'm saying it's real like legit to you know and as a as a as as the business entity you know what i'm saying like that's super helpful for me you know what i'm saying i'm hope right. hoping that i made the circumstances 
comfortable for you as a vendor but oh, like yeah. ultimately yeah. like you know what I'm saying you was always someone that I knew that I did not have to worry about like at all you right. know what I'm saying if it's right. sending him help you know to pull it in it was like yo now I got it it's gonna be on this cart I'm gonna just wheel it in and I'm good like you know what I'm saying I'm sorry Whew. one less thing yeah, I gotta stress yeah. about because again like you know I try to be courteous because again once the lights start my mind is everywhere you know what I'm saying so while I can be attentive and while I can be helpful I try to be because the moment someone calls me you know and then it's like whatever that problem is and then the next person that needs right. me is that problem and then i may not see you right. for another 30 you know what i'm saying but just right. knowing like yo he good he locked in I'm so good, no yeah. you've always been one you know what i'm saying consistently like present if i needed you you know what i'm saying to pull up to a event if i invited you out um but then prepare too man your preparation is no joke appreciate you bro appreciate you and then, like you said the relationships because I mean, we've done a lot of events together now, so I know if you find me, I got an event going on. It's just nothing because I know it's gonna, the event's going to be professional. It's going to be put together. It's not going to be no issues, and that's why I'm like it's easy for me to come do an Iron Root event because I know it's going to be it's going to be proper. It's going to be professional. It's going to be a good time too. And if people come out and show love to that. I know as a vendor, when I'm setting up Iron Root, I'm not just going to be making five dollars for like five hours of work. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have events where people come, they want to, you know, want to support, want to participate, they show love to vendors. So it's easy to do shows like that on a consistent basis when people are calling you. You're like, yeah, I want to do that show because I know it's going to be beneficial to everybody's involved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so, and speaking on that, do you have, um, what are some super. And it don't have to be ours, bro. Like, I appreciate yeah. you, the look. Thank you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> and scene. You know what I'm saying? No, that wasn't an act. That was real. But, like, yeah. I would just want to throw out there, like, places that you vended in Arizona that was just, like, really good for your business or your exposure. Um, and places that you would recommend other folks that are either coming up to, like, yo, now that things are opening back up, these places yeah. are probably going to be doing shit again. Like, you should look yeah. to try to get some exposure in these spots. Mm -hmm. uh, three, three, uh, Events off top, I can say one is the um, Pancakes and Booze show. That's like a, it's a traveling art show. They come to Phoenix like probably two or three times a year, mm -hmm. and it gets a really, really good crowd for us. You know, for people who are trying to get seen, especially new artists who are trying to get work out there. It's it's low cost and it can be high reward too. So you know, some artists can make a little bit of money doing that too. So that's definitely one show I would suggest that people can do is the Pancakes and Booze show. Okay. Um, Another show that was really popular for me when I was kind of really getting my ground, I don't know if they come out here anymore, but it's called Trap Art. Trap Art, okay. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. They were a traveling show, but it's when, you know, since the pandemic, I don't know if they're really traveling like that outside of Cali. Mm. Um, I did travel to, to Cali one time to do a Trap Art show out there. It was worth it. So if you're, you know, if someone wants to travel, you know, Cali's right next door. It's called Trap Art, you know. Great crowd, good exposure, and people do show love to, to artists and vendors too. Okay. Um, so we got and pancakes, another and one, blues, trap yeah, art. Yeah, got you. Trap art. And then the third one, the local, is the AZ Hip Hop Fest. Um, okay. Yeah, I did that like three years in a row. And at the time, Antoinette, she was, you know, she was, she was the telling the plug, AZ yeah. Walk, So, yeah, she was the plug. So it was really easy to, for us to get in. You know, she took care of you know of us contact. You know, she she was really on top of making sure the artists were not only prepared, but then they had proper space to showcase and do the thing. So because of her hard work doing on the art work with that, you know, as an artist coming in, I was able to set up showcase. And I made some you know some really good connections to other artists in the valley. So and those are the three like off top that I'd be like, yeah, these are definitely the events that really helped me grow, meet people further my exposure and really my income as well okay now nah, dope i'm gonna definitely throw up graphics for all of those so that folks are able yeah. to you know that don't know can definitely look into them i don't i think i've definitely sure. heard of pancakes and booze the other two i'm pretty mm -hmm. familiar with uh, mm -hmm. obviously hip-hop i do a lot of hip-hop music so yeah. some of the artists yeah. that i produce with or work with perform there I think the yeah. first time I experienced it, I was filming some stuff for Ashton. I mean, again, bro, I was doing anything. I was filming for like $25 a night. You know what I'm saying? I'll come through and film my artist. Like, so Ashton was using yeah. those services. He'll hit me up. I'll yeah. come through and get up close on stage while he's rapping. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just, just mm -hmm. be that guy. Again, just trying to get out there, be on the scene. But that's where I got first introduced to RTU or, you know, folks putting on the um, uh, mm -hmm. AZ Hip Hop Fest. So, now that's amazing. What a... Uh, what uh what music are you listening to? I mean, I know somebody just dropped mm -hmm. two days ago, so you know, that's what I've been locked in on. I can't lie. <laughs> but uh <laughs> what you've been listening to, man. Yeah, you know. 
Same here. Same here. <laughs> I've been, uh, that, that encounter has definitely been all weekend for me. Uh, but before that, Pusha T, uh, the sun was dry. I was heavy mm-hmm. with Pusha T album. I'm a, I'm a Pusha T fan. Uh, before that, um, album wise, I was real heavy on Wiz Khalifa. Oh, okay. Because he, yeah, he dropped the album at the end of 2021, uh, Wiz Got Wings. Wow, really? I think definitely I missed that been completely. Heavy on that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just slid that yeah. in there. He's been working out, bro. I haven't been paying attention yeah. to too much Wiz, <laughs> and they just threw that out there. Right. Right. Um, definitely Wiz got wings. That was heavy. And I was real. I took it back for a while because I, I recently completed a, uh, a Wu-Tang piece. Mm. So uh, I, re- I, I was real happy for Wu-Tang for a good month. Like, in the 36 chambers, I was sitting the individuals, only good for Cuban links. Yeah. Title, like, I was sitting them all because I was getting in my Wu-Tang mode to get the piece right. done. So I was real happy with Wu-Tang for a while. So, and then uh, another one, as I was shot, Isaiah was shot. Um, TDE. Oh, yeah. He mm-hmm. came on the album last year, The House is Burning, and that's still in heavy rotation for me now. So yeah. That was definitely. <laughs> Man, I've been enjoying his music since Shot You Down. That was a, our introductory, oh, yeah. but it was like, yo, all right. You know, just the mindset, the the texture and the voice, like all of mm-hmm. that, like how 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 it came across, you know what I'm saying? And then all black hippie got on it and made it crazy yeah. and now like, all right, you yes, know what I'm saying? Sir. So yes, I enjoy sir. just like what he comes out with, you know what I'm saying? And so that's a good one. That's yeah. I mean, I guess I'm a TDE. I guess kinda of biased, bro. I'm from L A T D E it's it's super biased, but like you know that's I like it for sure. But the camp has talent though. The camp got talent. It's not like they got bums in there. Everybody who comes out with something is he. Right. Yeah. So, and they're super I mean, unique. TD, or, TD you know. is a, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, it's just too TD many is name definitely name. camp. You check out. I know I'm changing the subject because I'm trying to get what you're listening to. But uh, the other yeah, dude yeah. that they just signed. Uh, r- 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 damn, I just was looking him up. Vaughn, Ray Vaughn. Is it Rah- 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 Oh, Ray, Ray Vaughn. Vaughn. I haven't checked him. Is he any good? Man, there's this freestyle he did on LA Leakers last year. Like when they announced mm-hmm. that they signed him, he dropped the freestyle that same day. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard too much of the music since then, but that freestyle I enjoyed. You know, it, could, it definitely came off as written or whatever, but still it was like, yo, right. all right, this this nigga's coming with some shit. So to that okay. to that point of like who they have, I always like, you know, the people that they signed from, you know, SZA and they got this new chick out called I don't know how to mm-hmm. pronounce it. I think it's Dochi, D O E C H I I. You know what I'm saying? She got that persuasive song, and it's just a bop, and it's just like everybody's just doing their thing, you know what I'm saying? And it's good to see, like, mm-hmm. creatives allowed to, like, create, you know what I'm saying? And not everybody is forced right. to, like, yo, we need that top 40 hit today. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Every, a bunch of Drake minions, or, you know what I'm saying? Just carbon copies of the next big thing, right. like, in order to, to go up. Uh, right. But, yeah, are there any new artists that are coming out? Not TDE, but just across that you're thinking, like, maybe, you know, got some potential to to really shape some stuff up? Um, I know there's a, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know his name, but I wanna say it's Coaster or something like that. He had a really, really dope freestyle that mm-hmm. went viral. And it, the freestyle gave me very ODB type vibes. Mm. Like his style was very ODB type. And I'm keeping my eye on him because I'm like, let me see what he gonna do because for him to take an ODB type rhyme style and flow the way he did, uh, that's some skill. Right. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm a sh- I'll shoot you the name. I'll shoot you the okay, name. Okay, yeah, once you figure it out. Yeah. You know, I try to. I got you. Look it up. Now, that's dope, yeah. too. Like, it, it, when you. And, like, all of the cats started coming with this, like, nostalgia, you know, for folks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Griselda, mm-hmm. like, them being able to really pop off during a time like this you know what i'm saying where everything is these trap uh derivatives you know what i'm saying they got mm-hmm. some elements of trap and even drills like your cats can mm-hmm. really still give you that shit that you you cannot do like this versus you know this other just stuff like that, you're going you know? crazy you know but it's, it's still right. good music but it's just like that nostalgia but you know still seeing that be able to exist because like from a label perspective or for the people providing funding, they're just looking at the top charts and it's just like, yo, mm-hmm. that don't sound like what's at the top right now, you know what I'm saying? But understanding mm-hmm. that niche markets could still like provide you so much like, I don't wanna say prop, like profit, you know, so at the end of the day, like you right. don't have to make it general, you know what I'm saying, to for your artist to pop or to have success. Right. And uh, just to pick it back up in that Griselda, that whole Griselda camp is, uh, that's a problem, every one of them. Right. That, that being the Butcher album, that was fire. Man. Man, for sure. I just love to see it, yeah. bro. Like again, as a yeah. as a as a art as an artist, you know what I'm saying, but also as someone who is just like, yo, I don't 
necessarily make stuff to like be what's popular you know what I'm saying I'm just going about life making art and being an artist you know what I'm saying whatever comes come uh, from that you know what I'm saying and just seeing other artists be able to do that I'm sure there's still label pressures I know they had to each do like an individual album for their deal with the other you know what I'm saying so still like these little plays that happen but in general when folks are able to create from a place of just like wanting to create it's like the art comes across better you know, because then in five years, we're hearing from the artists, like, oh, I went out of my deal. You know, I put out these last three albums because they was bullshit. And it's just like, right, damn, bro. Right. Like, fuck. So you where's, know, the, kinda... where's the artistry? Where's the artistry? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and then on the, visual, on the visual tip, man, are there any either designers or, you know, painters or anybody... Even on the visual side of things, uh, I said visuals again, but I mean video, like uh, film type stuff uh, that inspire you or, you know what I'm saying, even movies, whatever. Uh, movies, the why that inspire me, um, I'm, I'm a big movie buff, I'm not going to lie. Okay. I, I love I love movies, like, and I've seen a lot. A lot of movies? Okay. So, yeah, I've seen a lot of movies. Uh, but one that I can say that truly one of my favorites that I go to and watch a lot. He's going to laugh at this, but it's Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump? Nah, that's a good one, man. Forrest Gump. <laughs> Forrest Gump is one of my all-time favorite movies. Like, It's just a, a really good movie to watch. It gives a good feel. Like, the story is just so much fun to to watch visually. It's just, I love watching Forrest Gump. Forrest that's yeah, that's a movie. Yeah. That's a go-to for me. So, um, and that one, you know, I love you know Marvel movies. Those are fun to watch. I get a lot of inspiration that to do like comic work. Mm -hmm. I love some Marvel movies and a good mob movie too, like some Godfather, you know, know, Mobster, um, Goodfellas, something like that. Like I always get in a very creative sense. I don't know why, but when I watch a mob movie, I immediately want to go to the computer and start painting something. Right? (laughs) It's weird. (laughs) There's definitely some things for me, man, that I'll watch like documentaries or something like that, and I'm just Mm -hmm. like, yo, I'm locked in now. I need to, I need to get to my creative space and like. And really go there, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What are uh? So it's random, you know what I'm saying? But like growing up, mm-hmm. I didn't get to I didn't get to watch a lot of uh like popular popular movies. Um, mm-hmm. and then you know my grandma grew up in a Christian household, so she didn't play about mm-hmm. no witchcraft or like too much violence, you know what I'm saying? Same here. <laughs> Until I got outside of that, I got you know exposed to other things. But I did get to sneak. Man, I used to climb to the top of the 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 closet and grab players club or i'll grab baby right. boy get the vhs right. and pop it in like what are some of your i mean maybe top three hood classics top three hood classics uh first one that comes to mind boys in the hood okay uh, boys, in love, the hood. Love boys in the hood uh definitely one of my tops uh higher learning is definitely up there higher learning. um higher learning definitely higher learning and then school days school days okay yeah yeah Ah, oh, that's all. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I love school yeah. days, man. I love school yeah, days. That's a classic. Spike Lee is one of my Dean, favorites. Dean, Big Brother, all my teeth. Yeah, sir. Me and Julian. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Yeah>. Dean. <laughs> it was all. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. Ah, so. oh, yeah, it's tough, man. I don't even know lie, if I could do that. I got, I'm not gonna lie, I got to throw Friday in there too. Friday, you know, Friday's right? always a good place. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I just feel the, bad not mentioning it. <laughs> you know, just the cast and Come on. just everybody, what they've become. It's, it's crazy, yeah. man. No, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah no, nah, I love school days. I love all of those. For me, mm-hmm. maybe if I had to just go, because again, I didn't write these questions down. I'm not the, mm-hmm. I'm not the <laughs> premier interviewer, you know, so I just right. thought of it right now. Hood Classics, boom, go. Cool. Um, but no, nah, man, I love. Friday, definitely, man. For sure. Yep. I don't. I don't have an order though. I don't know which is what. They just popping up. I ain't even mad. And because I'm from the island, man, I got throwing shatas. I love shatas. It, it's oh, not. Man. It's more for sentimental value. You know what I'm saying? Then we ain't gonna talk about the cinematics, but like, right? It, <laughs> it just meant a lot. That's <laughs> a whole know? classic, though. That is a whole classic. Man, and then and then I love the wood. I love the oh, wood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So these are just personal picks, man. I ain't willing to go to Twitter battle for them, but those, <laughs> those are the ones that I definitely rock with. Or I find myself watching a lot. But, like, my yeah. favorite movie of all time, that's not a hook classic. My top two. One could be considered It's All About the Benjamins. But then my other favorite mm-hmm. movie was Black Swan, bro. For a while, it was Black oh, Swan. Yeah. Just because okay. of, like, the storyline, bro, and just mm-hmm. kind of how it all unfolded. Like, for me, it was interesting. Mm-hmm. Um and maybe back then I wasn't as in the movie, so my bar was super low, you know, because again, it was like 
Yo, I don't want to. I don't want to just be like yo, my shit is uh the wood. You know what I'm saying? Right. They, they're just like ah, oh, oh, his his palette is urban. <laughs> right, like, right. Black Swan. I, I I love the meaning, but man, they be like Black Swan. What? <laughs> it's like oh, this nigga's a poet. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, for a while I did enjoy I got I probably got a new one now, but I don't know, even today, bro, I find myself watching more TV. You know, not TV, yeah. but like these yeah. shows that are insecure or you know, back before Kevin Spacey fucked it up, uh, House of Cards was like something that was like, you know what I'm saying, popping for me. I would watch mm-hmm. that show consistently and then it was just yeah. like yeah, it's nothing they could do with that now. But like Snowfall yeah. and Power and these other shows that are kind of giving See. us this excitement. I'm literally catching up on Snowfall now. I just started season five, and I started oh, nice. season one. Yeah, so Snowfall's been actually like the show I've been watching lately. Okay, no, I love that one yeah. for sure. Like I put one of my homies onto it, and you could tell, man, that it was a long time ago when I watched season one because yeah. he coming yeah. to work and this nigga like, yo, hey, man, why they do him like this? I'm like, where you right. at? Like, so oh, right. yeah, no, I'm on. <laughs> so I'm like, I gotta refresh my memory and shit. Like, oh damn, they did Who do that. Is that? Too. Like. <laughs> I'm like, yo, did so and so come in yet? He's like, nah. Who's right. that? I'm like, okay, nah. That's that's a whole other season, bro. <laughs> that's funny. That's true, though. So, had you been seeing it, and then eventually you just like, oh, let me see what this is about, or did someone say like, yo, you need to watch oh, it, bro? Everybody was like, like all my boys are like, every time so I said like, I ain't seen Snowfall. Everybody's like, you ain't seen Snowfall. You got that same reaction. Like, so, yeah, same reaction. So I was like, man, let me just. And me and my lady started it, and she it was a little too much for her. She was like, I'm good on this. I'm like, I got to keep it pushing. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've been watching it, and, man, I've been like, I've been into it. That's like, funny. I just finished season four, and I went to see I'm like, yeah, let, me, let me go ahead and finish this up since season five is the last fun. So right. I'm definitely enjoying it. So what's the protocol? I mean, there she gave you an exit, but, like, in general, if y'all watching shows together, there is there a, like, all right, I'm going to keep watching, and then she catch up on her own, or is like, yo, don't go to the next episode without me? Like, we have our shows we watch together. So we'll be like, you want to watch this together? Yeah, okay. So neither of us going to watch it without the other. But if it's like we watch a show, I'm like, I'm not feeling it. She's like, well, I like it. I'm like, well, you can go ahead. Right, right, uh, and then it's just like free yeah. reign. It's like when she said it was too much. It's like, all right, I'm about to binge this. I'm good, like I'm about to binge this tonight. Right, I'm like, so you done, then, right? Let me just make sure, like. Right, I'm nah, for sure, head. for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah nah, right. definitely, man. Well, hope you enjoy the rest of this this season. You know what I'm saying? I think they got one yeah, more after this. Go. I think they're doing, uh, and that should be dope. Um, let me see what we got. Oh, we at 46 minutes. Damn, we've been rolling, bro. My bad. I don't mean to keep you too long. I'm like, you're looking at the clock like that. All right, so let me see. What's a... uh, How do I want to wrap you? Uh, So, yeah, in terms of like... I mean, because we coming from Snowfall, we talking about that crack rock. <laughs> and now we got to talk about uplifting some shit real quick. Uh, right, what's been right, some right. great piece of advice that you received, like, you know what I'm saying, throughout your journey from anybody that's entered it could be a grandparent it could be a business partner what's been like some key advice that you know you look back at and it's like yeah this really helped me yeah um i know one piece by it immediately comes to mind was actually the guy who does my printing now he's, he's his name is maynard uh, maynard breeze breeze yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, found him yeah. through Antoinette, man. Me too. Me too. I hey, man. Shout Antoinette out Antoinette, the super plug, bro. The super, super plug. plug. She don't put. She don't put so many on to so many. Like it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's exactly why she's getting what she's getting. I know it's a sidebar, oh, yeah. but like all the yeah. love and praise and success she's right. receiving is yeah. because of that. Like she's a genuine she's person so that looked out for sure. Facts. Facts. Um, but you know, through her plug, man. He, I remember one time he told me that I, I got a piece printed from. Uh, it, actually, it was my Nipsey piece when Nipsey first when Nipsey first passed. I did a piece for him, and I got it printed. And I told him it, it, the print came out beautiful. And I said, "Then I said, man, I don't want to sell this." And he told me, then, he said, just, "He said, come on, TK. He said, don't ever get attached to any of your pieces where you don't want to sell." And I, that that really put us. I'm like, that's true because I mean, as artists, you know, we get so connected to pieces we make because we put so much time, effort. Yeah. And just really our blood, sweat, and tears into when we get connected to these pieces. But at the same time, like we're trying to make it as entrepreneurial, self-employed business, we have to make sure that we can't get too connected to where we don't want to sell a piece if someone wants to buy it. Yeah. 
So that was a great piece of advice for me because I'm like, you know what, I, I really do got to make sure I don't get too connected where I don't want to accept money from someone, you know, someone's trying to buy my work. Yeah, no, nah, that's real. That's real. And I, I often face that dilemma in the music space, yeah. bro, because I make music, but I make beats, but I also write, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So imagine I'm sitting there cooking up and I'm like, oh. Oh shit! There's no way I'm giving this away. <laughs> this is my beat. Like I'm gonna write right. to this. I'm gonna record to this, and I do that a lot, bro. Big and, and I'll record, and then I don't do anything with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, I could have easily mm -hmm. sold that. Got that off. Whatever. If my idea was great or if it was bad, whatever it was. But I'm just like, right. sometimes it just sit on my computer because I get tired of it. You know, I play that shit over right. and over again. Go from the computer to the shower, replaying it constantly right. or whatever. So no, I definitely connect, right. and I'm gonna use that advice, man. I need to use it more because again, yeah, I, I get attached. Like, I did some commission work definitely. not too long ago for like a, a Christian TV broadcast, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm making that dramatic, cinematic stuff, and it's sounding right. crazy. And I'm yeah. working on like a poetry tape, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, a little bit of this little crazy <laughs> vibe, but like on some of that Kendrick where you're going crazy with the right, with the right. piano on the back type shit. It's like for me, I hear that and I'm like, yo, I could do this with that, but. I got to remember, yo, I'm working on this commission, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to get them three <laughs> options to look at. So now I got to right. make a whole nother beat because I want one of them, you know what I'm saying? Or right. whatever the case is. But no, I need to do a little more. Because there are times where I need to, yo, this is mine and take it. But this the ones mine. that can be for sale, I just need to let go a, a little a little yeah. more. Because I don't put out you as see. much music. But also for myself, bro, I don't, I don't know if I want to be that. Like, I'm not trying to be the face, like this popular rap artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I'm the root. Like, I... I you know, Dom Root, like, again, I'm not a branch. Right. I'm not the apple. Like, I, I'm I'm behind the scenes, and I genuinely enjoy that right. process. But I get inspired, right. bro. I get inspired. And I'm just like, yo, I, I need to get on this, bro. <laughs> right. So. I get that. I get that. And it's, like you said, you got to keep telling yourself, you know, even those those gems that you love, like, let me just let me just put it out there to see what happens. You know what I'm saying? And let someone mm -hmm. else take it. You know, because there's times, too, I'll record a demo for someone. I'm like, yo, here's, it, here's this, bro. You take it. And you do your thing, you know, and I'll have an artist right. like, nah, bro, like, actually, I'm just going to, I'm going to take the second verse. Like, you keep yours right. on there. Cause even the song that I have out is called Suede, you know what I'm saying? I wrote it for mm -hmm. the homie that's on the track with me, Lee Water. You know what I'm saying? Right. I wrote the hook, I wrote a verse, and I'm like, you don't need, need to sing my verse, bro. I just Here's an example, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or, you, or you can take it, it's yours. Whatever you want to do right. with this, this concept is yours from the beat to the words. And then he right. hit me with that, uh, nah, man, you sound crazy on here, bro. Like, let me just take the second verse. But it's a song with me singing, you know what I'm saying? And again, mm -hmm. I, I'm not that confident. I can do poetry. I can even rap right. and get my shit off. But, like, when you, when you talk about confidence in comparison, like, my singing voice and my poetry voice, mm -hmm. I got way more confidence mm -hmm. standing up in a room full of people doing a poem than I do, like, hitting a note, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, right. we got right. some greats, like, in the history of singing, <laughs> and I'm not that, like, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> so like, on that right. on that front, it's just like, yo, I'm, I'm learning to grow, you know what I'm saying? Because, again, I'm just like, yo, either... And stop making the demos because it's going to push me to have to sing more. But, you know, again, it's all art, you know what I'm saying? So it was fun to be able to, like, get to do that and get the idea off. But ideally, in my brain, it would have been him, like, doing that whole thing, you know what I'm saying? And I would have right. been just as happy as, like, my verse being on the song because, again, I don't need the celebrity, you know what I'm saying? I just love making right. the art and <laughs> ultimately getting paid for it, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to just right. make the art and do yeah. nothing, but... No, to to that, um, I would say for you, man. What's uh, so that's like a little bit of you know, m me rambling off the edge of that. But I do want to ask. Um, I mean, I, man, that Maynard one is is so dope. So it's hard to like get off of that. But like, yeah. what would be some advice that you would give to some folks? You know, it's either doing di uh, visual art or just performative art um, in the climate that we're in, man. Because like. I feel like there's so much information out there, right, for the artist to be able to Google something or YouTube something and look it up and all these revenue streams, right, or this TikTok inspiration. You're watching stuff on TikTok and you influence to do this and do that. It's so much out there. Like, how do, you know, or in what ways would you recommend artists, like, navigate these spaces where they're trying to figure out what their voice is, you know, but then they have all these other, I don't, intrusive, like, ideas that are popping around like yo you can make money doing this you can make money doing this when essentially you should be focusing on like what you want to do what's important for you like how would you get that message across to somebody uh for one uh like you just said everybody's on tiktok everybody's on instagram twitter all that so don't compare to every yourself to everybody else you see 
you know, everybody has their own genuine trait. Everybody has their own genuine style. So you can't compare yourself to everybody else you see because, for one, that can, that sometimes that can get you down. You see, like, for example, you post something, you put a hard work, a lot of hard work in, you know, that post gets 20 likes. But, you know, you see someone you're comparing your, yourself to, they, they post something that you, know, you probably feel that's half as good as yours, they get 250 likes. So you're looking at yours, you're like, oh, I guess they're better than me because they got more likes. They ain't like them. You know what I'm saying? Don't compare yourself to, you know, other people you see. Just continue to put your work in and your time's going to come. That's so, real. Yeah. It's like don't yeah. compare your day one to their day 365. Like, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, they've been on this for a while. So right. if you are, like, just look back at where they were when they started. You know what I'm saying? Those humble right. beginnings. If you know, Most people, you can you can see that, that storyline. If you're on their page, you right. scroll down to the beginning of when right. they first post and they had the Galaxy 4, you know what I'm saying? And they look right. like an Android character, you know what I'm right. saying? And to, right. to now their content is crazy. They got the 4K, right. 8K cameras and they're doing whatever exactly. it is. You know, that's that's some real advice too. Because yeah. like, I mean, even yeah. as a person that's been in my space for a while, I watch some shit and I'm like, yo, easy, I could, I could do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then yeah. I'm just like yeah. allocating my brain power and my resources to trying to recreate this thing because it looked like it's the thing that's popping off. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where right. Instead, I just need to run my race and maybe mm -hmm. look at the macro of that thing you know and it's like oh okay here's what worked and why and here's right. what i'm doing but like how could i learn from that lesson you know what i'm saying is there something right. in my business model that i can create demand around and then build the structure out instead of taking that right. exact idea but then just putting the iron root sticker on it you know what i'm saying and then trying right. it over right. here right right um also too with people like um Just lost my total train of thought. I apologize. Nah, it's cool, <laughs> my yeah. Total train of thought is right away. So, um, but yeah, you're right. Just understanding that you know everybody's different. Your day one is going to be there through day 365. So, oh, what I was going to say is, when it comes to social media, everybody's this you know trying to build their social media presence. But don't forget to go out and do the actual footwork too. You know, go to networking events into your local cities, into your local neighborhoods, whatever. Get out there, you know, just just meet people face to face. You know, everybody outside again right now, so go outside, meet some people. Yes, sir. So you know, I know we're a social media age and it's a digital age, but don't forget, like the same footwork you're putting in on TikTok and Instagram, put that same footwork on networking in person and going to your you know, your local events too. Yeah, honestly, that's just as important. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. there's there's a select few that can do the digital and. And then still have the results like like I don't know if you watch too much game and stuff on Twitch or whatever. You have this swag, Faze Swag or Nick Merckx. You know mm -hmm. these guys that mm -hmm. are playing video games and have all this content surrounding it. But Nick Merckx, mm -hmm. you know, he's been doing it for a long period of time. But he'll have a live right. show where he has all his you know bar have a barbecue basically where everybody comes out and they're buying tickets mm -hmm. just to be around Nick Merckx. You know what I'm saying? But right. again, he had to lay that foundation, being in all the random chat rooms, you know, streaming right. on all these random platforms and building right. it up. So even on the social side of things, there is groundwork that you got to put in exactly. being in those like to, you know, be at the top in those spaces. Uh, but more specifically, yeah, man, to our people that are creating art or music and, you know, mm -hmm. and wanting to one have because this is crazy you could be this popping group in real life but then your social can look trash you know and then that right. will impact your visibility but then again exactly. you could be this super popping brand on social media host a live event or do something live and then there's no, no attendance or right. there's no you know you're not really good at it you know what i'm saying and it's yep. just something that you yep. can get the good angles for on social so you definitely got to have balance like balance is super important exactly, exactly. All right, man. Drop uh, if you can, man. Let us know. You know, what I'm saying where they can stay following you, tapped into what you have coming out. Yeah. Um, so you can follow my uh, art page. It's at uh, Instagram is at I am T K R. That's I A M T K A R T. Or you can follow like uh, like I said, I have a media company doing videography and photography. So that that page is called LQ Media. Uh, that Instagram is it's at LQ dot Media. That's LQ dot M E D I A. Okay, for sure. Yeah, definitely check yeah. that out. Yeah. LQ Media. What uh, what site do you use on to host your website? Oh, uh, like these. Uh, like Squarespace, Wix. Squarespace. Yeah. Okay. Squarespace. Nice. Yeah, I just got on there. Yeah. I used Wix a long time ago, and I switched to Squarespace. And I like Squarespace. Squarespace a lot better than Wix. Okay, nice. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually for Iron Root. We using Wix. Um, mm -hmm. 
but uh for my don i got my own website now donroot.world and mm-hmm. that's on squarespace um mm-hmm. and no i like it a lot man it's really user friendly in my opinion it is um, it and is. then it i really had is. one of my homies help me out kind of add some finesse and stuff to it yeah. so i really yeah. like it yeah well, squarespace oh, is a it offers you more too when it comes to like their templates and stuff i do like squarespace Right, yeah, no, I I have exactly the look I went for. I mean, it was good that I, I had a consultation with one of the homies that's really into that space, and I'm just yeah. like, he's like, yo, I could, cause I could build a website, you know what I'm saying, but I just can't make that shit look like the one people want to stay on, you know what I'm saying? So right. basically, yeah. out of the meeting, he's like, yo, build it, you know what I'm saying, as best as you can, mm-hmm. and it's cheaper for me to just come on and finesse, you know, than for right. me to build it for you. So I was like, all right, right. let me look up a template, I'm like this dude Joe Perez. I wanted something to give me off that vibe. And mm-hmm. then I found a template that looked like it, you know, built it. I mm-hmm. put the images there and then he came in and really like, oh, shit, this looks nice now. It looks yeah, like something yeah. that's unique. You know what I'm saying? So to that right. point, being able to collaborate and get it done, um, I liked, you know, user friend. Because originally, man, not and we're not slandering brands, but whatever. But Wix, it was definitely tough for me to get customer service help. Right? Everything was yeah. just so new for Wix. It's like, yeah, put in yeah. A, a form for that. And if it gets upvoted, you know, we'll implement it. And then. It's I was like, so stupid. Oh, hey, what? I need I, this is this is a great <laughs> idea. So just get it in here. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like so no, nah, it's definitely a learning experience. And uh nah man, I just want to thank you for chopping it up with me. I, um oh, yeah. it's been a long time coming, man. You've been doing some great work, you know what I'm saying? And we got to do some work in the past, uh one to one, Dom Root to TK, but then what the Iron Root brand, man, you've been definitely uh someone that we relied on you know what i'm saying when it was time to think of vendors too it was like yo hit up tk you know what i'm saying just yeah, again yeah. relationships and i'm not trying to say that i only mess with like my crowd but like when you develop a pattern you know what i'm saying and when you right. start to understand how people work it's a it becomes like a, a, a privilege man to have someone right. like you in the space because then i can have another vendor that come in that's not as prepared that's with right. drama and it's a whole bunch of other stuff you know right. what i'm saying so right. not nah, to that point man I, i've always appreciated your work your consistency man your inspiration definitely bro just seeing you just out here continuously continuing to grind man and find places like for your art to exist like just yeah. popping by seeing you out yeah. doing the first fridays i mean i didn't yeah. get to like pop by the table as much because i started doing sound for the color eight band you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah but like just knowing that you were out there on the grind consistently it was just it was crazy to see bro it's like motivation you know what I'm saying when you look around yeah. and you see your peers still going like it's something about that that makes you want to keep going you know what i'm saying but then when you Big look touch. around and everybody gone it's like shit. right yeah <laughs> It's like Will Smith in that last episode, boy. I'm telling you, man. it's crazy right now. <laughs> it's, it's empty in here, man. Yeah, like, for sure. Man. No, I uh, I really appreciate the opportunity, man. Honestly, I love coming here, talking with you. It's been a long time coming. You know, we ain't been able to talk in a little while, so definitely good to catch up. And I appreciate you, you know, allowing to come on and just speak with you. You know, be a part of Iron Root because I've, I've loved every show we've done together. All the all the work, all the business we've done together has really been a true blessing, bro. And I, I really appreciate you know the connection we have, the relationship we have. I hope we continue. continue yes, sir, man. Well. I mean, you a rare one, bro. Like you one of the rare appreciate ones. You. I got to see us at the very be- at the very literally, beginning. You know, Villas and Apache. Like we we man. inside the clubhouse <laughs> and just making it work, bro. And then we inside oh, the Rebel Lounge. We did the new right. thing. We did a fashion right. show. Like you really got fashion to see show. us. Like really try to get into the shit. So. Nah, man, it's, it's, you know, anytime we could do something to help you, bro, or support you, if you got something coming out, bro, and you just need to roll it out and you want a platform to talk about it on, shoot me a text, shoot me a message, bro, we'll, we'll lock in, we'll get something going. Uh, and yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure shit's going to be popping up and I'm going to be hitting you up or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So let's, uh, you know, here's to more work in the future, for sure. For sure, definitely. And keep me posted on the Iron Root, all the events, what you got going on, man. Whatever you got going on, let me know that we support you. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure.